Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's expert webinar titled R53 and CloudFront. I am Abhishek from Spring People. We are India's largest enterprise training provider. I will be your moderator for today's session. In today's session, we have Mr. Pankaj Dubey stands as a distinguished figure blending a wealth of hands-on experience with a passion for educating the next generation of cloud professionals. Boasting a stellar five-year career as an AWS cloud engineer, Mr. Dubey has seamlessly transitioned into a dynamic role, dedicating over two years of imparting invaluable cloud training. Pankaj is laser-focused expertise in AWS, including AWS organizations, SCP, VPC, RDS, IAM, EC2, S3, CloudTrail, SQS, SNS, and the versatile Terraform. Pankaj's commitment to staying at the forefront of technology is evident in his certifications as well. He is holding the AWS Certified Cloud Practitioner and AWS Certified Solution Architect certifications. In today's webinar, Mr. Pankaj will let us know about understanding overview of IP addressing and CIDR notation, VPC fundamentals, and advanced networking concepts. To all the participants, you can mention your questions in the chat box and it will be answered at the end of the session. Without further ado, let's start today's session. Now, I would like to invite Mr. Pankaj to start the session. Over to you, Mr. Pankaj. Thank you, Abhishek. Uh, hello, everyone. Good evening. So this is about me. Abhishek, give you a quick introduction. And let's jump on today's agenda. So in today's webinar, we are going to see what is meant by a DNS. What is the AWS DNS service? How is the internet traffic is routed towards the web application followed by health checks in Route 53? What are the routing policies AWS offers and the content delivered network service CloudFront and the features of CloudFront, time to live, cache invalidation, what are the origin types and the geo restriction. So with that being said, Let's start with the today's webinar. So first is the DNS. So as we know, DNS is the domain name system. Now, if I want to call someone, let's say I want to save this mobile number. I map it against a name. I want to save some Gmail contacts. Again, I want I map it against the name. So likewise, in D DNS as well, DNS as well. Whenever I host an application, let's say an e-commerce application, this application will be running on servers. And here will be the elastic load balancer, which is going to redirect the traffic to these servers, to these targets. So these targets, let's say servers in AWS world, we call it as EC2. And whenever I create an application load balancer, it helps me with a DNS name. And I cannot help the end users with the lengthy dns name and that's the reason i will map it against the name let's say amazon.in amazon.com or google.com so once i hit amazon.in or amazon.com this request goes to the servers and this is what we call it as the dns and how it resolves the ip so if you want to call someone you need their phone number you save their number and how about the internet if you want to reach amazon.in you need the ip address people can't remember ip address people can't remember the dns name and that's the reason we map it against the friendly name amazon.in or amazon.com now the domain name system is the phone book of the internet we access the e-commerce web application or any other application through the browser and this client gets the ip address once we hit the amazon dot com or amazon dot in so that's the dns domain name system which translates names to ip address so the browsers can 
load the internet resources now if you are you might be you might be aware of you have heard about the godaddy or you have heard about the hover where you can buy the domain where you can buy the domain so if i want to buy a domain i get, go to this site i pay a dollar in uh, a price per year and that domain will be mine and against that domain i am going to i am going to map the resources what is mean by resources let's say a ec2 instance or application load balancer or an ip address so in the same way route 53 is the service which aws offers as a part of dns domain name system so why route 53 it's r53 route 53 53 is the dns port number 53 is the dns port number so it registers domain name route internet traffic to the resources for your domain now let me walk you through the console and if i search here on the aws console route 53 it's a scalable dns and domain name registration like we register the domains in godaddy or hover likewise i can register the domain in route 53 as well so if you see here under the registered domains i have a domain which is already registered awscloudfi.com if i want to register a domain click on the registered domain let's try to check the same awscloudfi.com search it is not available why it is now not available because i have already registered it if i check for awscloud6.com yeah this is available exact match you need to pay 13 us dollars per year if i want to check let's say amazon.in it is not available because we know amazon.in it's an e-commerce web application so likewise you can register the domains in the route 53 once you search it you will go to the billing page it will uh, it will ask you for the pricing 13 dollars per year so what route 53 does it routes internet traffic to the resources for your domain when i talk about resources it's a ec2 instance or an application load balancer where your application resides it also does the health of your resources what is mean by health check i'm going to um, show you uh, uh, i'm going to show you a demo for this it connects user request to internet application running on aws or on premises even you can define the on premises resource as well now whenever you register a domain whenever you register a domain so as of now i have one domain aws cloud5.com whenever i made the payment it made it this was available in 10 to 15 minutes and along with this domain a hosted zone got created a public hosted zone got created so what is a hosted zone it's a dns database collection of records for the domain so this is the hosted zone aws cloud5.com is the hosted zone inside which we define the records we create the records what is mean by create a record is like the record is an actual entry of the data so if i click on create a record and click on let's say next i can define a record so let's say aws cloud5.com it should point to ip address what is my ip address let's say an ec2 instance which has a public ip address i can define it here and and create a simple record so that is mean by a record so we have public and private hosted zone the public hosted zone gets created when you register the domain so this hosted zone got created when i registered the domain the same name aws cloudfi.com another is the private hosted zone it, it, is, it gets associated with VPC and only accessible within the VPC. Now, if I have an e-commerce application hosted, I am going to use the public hosted zone. Route to internet facing resources, resolve from the internet and use the global routing policies. And when I talk about the private hosted zone, let's, let's talk about an, uh, let's say an organization, any company, and they want to host a timesheet application. It should be accessible within the network. So in this case, we will use the private hosted zone to route it route to VPC resources, resolve from 
inside the VPC and it can integrate with on-premises private zones. So this is also possible. Now how the internet traffic is routed to your website or web application. Okay, so first step here is the end user. Here is the end user. So what here is the end user and this request he is requesting a page called www.example.com and this request first goes to the dns resolver that is nothing but the internet service provided internet service provider dns in case if this dns has the has cached the ip address for this example.com the request will be served but as of now let's say the request is not cached in the dns resolver we will call it as a ttl it will go to example.com this will go to the dns root name server so we have almost 1300 plus root name server instances and these are accessible with the help of 13 ip addresses and ip addresses and these root name servers are managed by an asa nasa us army where assign and there are different organization who are who manage this so these are the 13 we have 1300 plus root names server instances and accessible via the 13 ip addresses these are across the globe so once it's uh, searched uh, once this request come to the dns root name server root name server will check this is for dot com d dot com if it is a dot org or it's it is a dot co it will transfer this request to dot com tld tld is the top level domain here it is dot com that's the reason the request goes to the dot com name server dot com top level domain name server from the dot com tld top level domain server it comes to the amazon route 53 name servers we call it as the authoritative name servers and this root route 53 name servers will have the information about the ip address of this example.com and it will it will help the help with the ip address to the dns from dns it will go to the browser and from browser again it will go to the web server here is your web server and and they are, this end user will be able to see the content which resides on this web page so this is how a traffic is routed to your website or the web application so route so aws route 53 offers routing policies so what are the routing policies it offers the simple routing policy the failover routing policy geolocation geo proximity latency based multi-value and weighted now let's go ahead and see each of this routing policy so simple routing policy so it is used for a single resource no health checks so say, as the name says it's a simple used for single resource now if i want to show you here here is the hosted zone if i click on it inside which we create the records and whenever i try to create a record it shows me the routing policy simple routing policy weighted routing policy geolocation latency failover or multi-value now in this case use if you want all of your clients to receive the same responses so i have only one ec2 instance and when i have one ec2 instance it will have a public ip address let's say 1.2.3.4 and here is a web page which resides if i want to show the same web page i have only one ec2 instance let's take an example of static website just want to show the web page i am going to use this simple routing so once i click, click on this simple routing click on next i am going to define the simple record so here if i click on www.awscloudfi.com record type a which routes the traffic to an ipv4 address and choose an endpoint it's an ip address and i can enter the ip address of my ec2 instance so that is the simple routing next is the failover routing so as the name says failover so let's say i have my application hosted in and let's say a north virginia this is my primary and another is the secondary secondary site it is in mumbai 
I have a EC2 instance which resides in North Virginia. I have EC2 instance which resides in Mumbai region. And here I am going to configure the uh, uh, configure the routing policy. So for this demo, what I have done, I am into the North Virginia region. If you click on the instances, I have a primary site web server. If I click on it, this is the public IPv4 address. And if I redirect same to the Mumbai region, here is the Mumbai API hyphen South hyphen one. Again, I have the one more EC2 instance, which I am going to call it as the secondary site. And this is the public IPv4 address. Now, if I go to the hosted zone, if I go to the hosted zone and if I go to click on the health checks, so what are health checks? Let me discuss before I show you the demo for failover routing. So what is so route 53 health checks? It monitor the health and performance of your web application, web servers and other resources. Now, let's say I have created an EC2 instance and I am need to do a health check. All the I need I am all the request as of now is redirecting to the EC2. What if in case the primary fails? This should be redirected to the secondary. And how should I know that the EC2 instance which resides in North Virginia has failed with, with the help of health checks? So health checks are present across the globe. They are located globally. What it does, the, it's also check the status of other health checks. Let's say if I want to check the health of any application component, that's also possible. The status of any Amazon Cl CloudWatch alarm, in case if the status of CloudWatch alarm goes into alarm state, I can get, check the health check. So health check status and notification, if I want, I can get a notification as well. And these are the health checkers located globally. What health check it does, TCP, HTTP and HTTPS. Now, if you see here in the health check, I have created a couple of health check. First is North Virginia, Mumbai. North Virginia is my primary. Mumbai is my secondary. If you see here, let, uh, so these are in healthy status. This is 3.211.182.32 is the IP address of the EC2 instance, which resides in North Virginia. That is the primary site. And Mumbai, 13.232.251.37. As of now, both are the healthy. Let me show you how to do a health check. I have already configured. Let's say you name it as Mumbai. What to monitor? You want to monitor an endpoint. You want to monitor state of other health checks. Let's say an application component. And if you want to monitor the state of CloudWatch alarm, if where is a CloudWatch region where you need to specify. But for this demo, let's go ahead with the IP address. So specify endpoint by IP address. Protocol is HTTP. HTTPS TCP and give the IP address the same IP address copy the IP address and you can specify the copy the IP address and the health check of this IP address will be done with, by the health checkers and advanced configuration request interval will be fast and failure threshold will be one if I want to know that EC2 instance fail within 10 seconds fail over it to another side. So this is how we configure the health check as of now. I am not going to create it. So North Virginia health check and Mumbai health check. Those are in healthy status. So now let's say I have uh, so North Virginia is the primary Mumbai is the secondary side. Now I'm going, going to the hosted zone. So in this hosted zone, I have already configured the failover routing. So if you see here the routing policy is failover failover and record name is www.awscloud5.com and if you see here the failover primary is 3.211.182.32 that is nothing but my ip address of the ec2 instance if i click on here the so 3.211.182.32 so this is the primary the secondary one that is the mumbai if i redirect it to mumbai 13.23.251.377. This says now how to configure a failover routing. Let me show you that. Create a record. Which routing policy you want to select? Simple. We have seen simple and we have also seen the fail. We, we are going to discuss the failover. Use to route traffic to a resource when the resource is healthy or a different resource when the first resource is unhealthy. 
the primary in case if it is unhealthy traffic should move to mumbai and once you create click on the failure click on next subdomain www.awscloudfi.com ttl let's make it as 60 and here you define the failover record so what you define first is ip address let's say 1.2.3.4 and you select the failover record type it's a primary or a secondary and you define the health check if it is a primary i have selected north virginia and you can name it define the failover record another record ip address let's say 2.3.4.5 i'm taking it as a random number and this is my primary and select the uh, health check this is the health check so likewise we can define the failover record but i'm not going to create records because i have already created the records for this failover routing in which it maps to the primary maps to north virginia secondary maps to mumbai now if i try to access the same aws cloud5.com it says requests are served from primary site which is north virginia now what i am going to do is i am in mumbai i am in uh, let me redirect to the north virginia and i am going to stop the primary site purposely so let me stop it so once it stop once the instance is stopped this is going to be an unhealthy and traffic will be redirected to the secondary site it will take a couple of minutes we will see uh, we'll see it so as of now it's unhealthy the request will be not served, served from the primary site so this is the failover when you have a dr when you want to configure a dr you use the failover routing policy we will come to this failover routing policy after a couple of minutes next routing policy is the geolocation routing so geolocation is when you want to route traffic based on the location of your users it doesn't return the closest record so let's say let's say you have uh, in europe you have your application in europe and it's in us one of the user is requesting the content from us and you know that from us people will understand the uh, people can understand content in english you can redirect this traffic the route 53 will redirect the traffic to the us region let's say north virginia region in case if the traffic originates from the europe and how route 53 does is with the help of ip checks so it it will check where does this query originate from it is from europe let's say spain the language here is the europe application we have made it in spain this traffic will be redirected to the europe region so likewise we can make use of geolocation routing can be used for regional restrictions or the language specific content okay now let's talk about uh, let me go one step back and we talked about the failover routing if you see here requests are served from the dr site that is mumbai that means i was able to successfully configure the failover routing now if i go to the health checks if i go to the health checks it says the from last two to three minutes it is unhealthy this north virginia health check is unhealthy because i have manually stopped the instance just for just to fail over it to mumbai now if i try to access it requests are served from the dr site which is mumbai earlier my requests were served from north virginia region now from the dr site mumbai so this is how a failover routing works next is the geo proximity when you want to route traffic based on the location of your resources and users now let's let's say here is india and here is the australia and here is us now as of now the traffic the indian users the traffic is routed to the united states but what i want to do is all the traffic want from india should be redirected to the australia so in this case we uh, so if i want to make the flexibility if i want to redirect the traffic based on location of resources and users we use the geo proximity routing 
so in geo proximity routing we use the term called bias we use the term called bias and if it is a plus bias i want to expand the region expand the region if i specify it is a negative i want to shrink the region now let's say i do not want the traffic from india to redirect to the us in this case what i am going to do is i am going to shrink it so when i shrink it within this on the map on the map I, on the map what i can do is i can specify the bias value i can shrink it and all the traffic from india will be uh, will be redirected to the resources which are running in australia so this is how a geo proximity works so if you see here one two three four five so they have created a the bias now if you see, uh, let me show it on the console itself if you click on the hosted zones and if you try to create a record you will not be able to find it here okay so you will be able to find in the geo proximity but before geo proximity click on next and you need to create the traffic policies so if you click on the traffic policies you can create a traffic policy so you can uh, select a policy name let's say a click on next so where you want to connect to a weighted geo proximity rule and it's a aws region if it is an aws region which region north virginia and you can specify a bias value so if you see here minus 99 to 99 so this is how you can create a uh, configure the geo routing policy next is the latency based routing so when we talk about latency based routing let's say my resources are hosted in mumbai and another is the hyderabad those do, both are the active mumbai is also active hyderabad is also active another user or user originates from pune now route 53 will check this user's request can be served from mumbai because the latency between pune and mumbai is less and that's the reason the user from pune the request will be served from the mumbai location in case if the query originates from hyderabad route 53 will check the latency is less between this user and the region hyderabad so the request will be served from hyderabad region itself so this is how a latency based routing works so when you have resources in multiple aws region and you want to route traffic to the region that provides best latency so here u hyphen west hyphen to 76 millisecond latency and route 53 behind the scene it maintains a database of latency and in case let's say a mumbai region we configure the health check for this and in case the health check is uh, let's say the mumbai resources are not available this will redirect the traffic to another let's say uh, in this case hyderabad okay so that is the latency based routing next is the multi value routing so amazon route 53 returns multiple values as the name says multiple value so user which resides is trying to access example.com and the request will go to multiple uh, load balancers or behind the scenes it is saying multiple load balancer and it returns this returns multiple values multiple values let's say ip address so if you see here in this example we can see one of the resources in unhealthy so this uh, this will not be written the healthy rate records let's say 10.1.1.2 1.4 .1 1.1 will be written up to eight healthy records will be written more if there are more than it or it's also possible but the best will be returned to the user and out of which the user the client will select the random value and the page will be accessed the web page will be accessed so this is a multi-value routing now talking about the weighted routing policies okay so weighted routing route traffic to multiple resourcing proportion that you specify now let's take an example you have uh, a resource in mumbai your application runs on dotnet and again you have let's say you know, in hyderabad your application runs on python and you have replatformed it 
now your requirement is like all the requests should be served to hyderabad region and where the application is running on the python programming language so in this case what you can do is let's say 100 users visiting your website or application you can define the weights like 80 should be redirected to mumbai 22 should be redirected to the new uh, new one hyderabad and once you get the feedback or once you get to identify like all the users the requests are served properly based on the feedback what you can do is you can gradually increase the traffic let's say you can do it 60 and 40 50 and 50 likewise you can increase the weight for the hyderabad region that is the weighted routing policy so that was all about the route 53 and so summarizing of whatever we have discussed in route 53 is route 53 is a dns service we have different routing policies we saw a demo of failover routing policy route 53 does the health checks of health checks of the records so what is mean by a record is actual entry of the data it's an ip address or um, application load balancer dns name so this is what we saw in the route 53 one more thing which i want to say is that whenever you buy a domain in route 53 i said like the public hosted zone gets created this in this public hosted zone you define the records and it can be from aws or also from the on premises as well now if you want if you do not want to host this public hosted zone in aws you can create the hosted zone in godaddy as well or in case in case you have bought a, a, a domain in godaddy and you want to create a hosted zone in aws this is also possible so what you need to do whenever we create a hosted zone four name servers four name servers that are the authority name servers are assigned to this uh, hosted zone we need to copy the name servers go to the godaddy and map it against the domain name let's say in this case let's say aws cloud5.com so likewise you can map it so let me show you that you cancel this if you see on the hosted zone if i click on the hosted zone if i want i can delete this hosted zone as well if you delete it you can create an another hosted zone with same aws cloud5.com and the four name servers if you see here on this on the in the inside the hosted zone i have four name servers so let's take an example 14631925 if i go to the registered domains and if i click on it if you see here the same name servers names are 14631925 so these name servers if i want to make changes in the name servers i can edit the name servers and i can save the changes so that is also possible that was all about the route 53 now let's talk about the cloud front so x what cloud front is a content delivery network it accelerates static website and content delivery now let's take an example of an ott platform netflix or hotstar and here is an s3 bucket and inside which a well, content inside which a video resides now this bucket is in north virginia and here are the users from india they are trying to access the content the request first goes to the s3 the request will be served but as there are multiple hops between India and North Virginia, I need better performance. So in this case, we use the edge locations. We use the edge location, which is part of global infrastructure. So what are edge location? Those are the mini data centers. Those are mini data centers. And inside this data center, we have like the servers are configured and lot of storage resources where we can cache the content where we can cache the content so in this case the user request from india and this request first it will go to north virginia the request will be served 
another user second user again if the request will go in this case the request will not go to the north virginia the request will be served from the edge location nearest edge location and in india we have edge location in mumbai and this request will be served from this edge location so between the the we are not going to burden our origin in this case the s3 i am calling it as origin so likewise all the request can be served from the edge location so these are the this is the importance of edge locations and how we can cache the content with the help of service called cloud front so cloud front plus edge location we are going to see a demo on there so serve video on demand or live streaming video it's a global content delivery network integrated with aws WAF, web application firewall and shield what is that i'm going to show you we can cache static or dynamic content and built-in security features so as a part of global infrastructure edge location is a mini data center we, which has more storage capacity which is used to cache the content so we have regions inside the regions we have ACs. inside the ACs, we have data center apart from that we have local zones and aws wavelength zones which helps which where we can run the workloads near to the customer and edge location is used to cache the content and when we talk about aws points of presence so we have edge locations in india we have multiple edge locations and we have regional edge cache as well when we talk about regional edge cache and we have edge location this regional edge cache has a larger width so compared to edge location it has a larger width and it can store more content for a longer period of time that is the regional edge cache now without caching without caching what will happen is repeat calls for the same data so user request here is the origin we call it as the origin and here my origin is s3 application load balancer or in custom origin if first user goes to the origin request is served but the performance is not better another user the request is served to the origin but i want to cache it and with the help of edge caching what we achieve is first the request these are the viewers end users request will first go to the origin this is the origin let's say in s3 bucket or any other custom origin from this origin first request will go to the origin after that the request the, uh, the content will be cached in the edge locations and another another viewers the content will be served from the edge locations in between the edge look in between the viewers and this origin we have edge location we have regional edge cache and we have origin shield so origin shield is another caching layer so edge edge locations regional edge cache and origin shield are the caching layers so this is about the edge caching what happen with the help of caching so user request first it will go to the it will check in the edge location if it does not find it will go to the origin s3 bucket or custom origin the request will be served the request will be served along with that the content will be cached here so it will see here cached copies of objects another request it will again just check in the edge location this time the request will be served from the edge location and that is we call it as the cache hit when the request is served from edge location that is cache hit what is cache miss request is the content not found in the edge location and the request goes to the origin that is the cache miss now we uh, configure the cloud front now let me show you here so if you see here cloud front global content delivery network i click on it we create a distribution so so distribution is just a configuration configuration of the unit which we create in the cloud front so if i click on create distribution it is asking me for an origin so what is my origin it can be an s3 it can be elastic load balancer api gateway or media package container or a media store container so for this demo i am going to create i am going to select an cloud front origin s3 so protocol http https only or match viewer and next is the origin path 
So let's say, let me show you that. Here I have S3 scalable storage in the cloud, simple storage service. And here I have bucket. So CloudFront origin S3. Inside the S3, I have index.html, which is the file which I want to display the content. So in this case, we can create a folder. In, so let's say I have a S3 bucket and inside which I can create a folder one and inside which again I can create a folder two and inside which resides index.html. So if I want to give this actual path, I am going to use the I'm going to use this origin path. So here I'm not going to use it because the content resides. I have not created a folder structure for this bucket CloudFront origin S3. The index.html resides here. This is the name and next is the origin access. So bucket must allow public access or origin access control settings or the legacy access identities. So legacy access identity is OAI where we use the CloudFront OAI to access the S3 buckets. But this is the advanced version origin access control setting which is recommended. What we uh, we can see here is bucket can restrict access to only CloudFront. So whatever the bucket I have created S3 bucket inside which index.html resides, it will be restricted only to the CloudFront. And this bucket is private. All the bucket, the bucket is private. The object which resides inside the bucket is also private. And let me show you that. So if you see here CloudFront origin S3 buckets and objects not public, that is the private. So origin access control settings and I am going to create a control settings and click on create. Once I create a control settings, what it says is you must update the S3 bucket policy. So CloudFront will provide the bucket policy. So once I click on create distribution, it will help me with the bucket policy, which I need to update in the bucket where I need to update in the bucket policy. So bucket policy is nothing but the resource based policy. I need to update the policy here. Okay, next is add header. I do not want to add a custom header. My origin is S3 and origin access control works with only with S3. Next is the enable origin shield. So we so origin shield is an additional caching layer that can help help reduce the load on your origin. And cache behavior, I'm setting it as yes. Weaver protocol policy. So what is mean by Weaver protocol policy is let's say here is your end user, multiple end user, and here is your edge location in between users are trying to access the content from the edge location. So what is the protocol you want to use HTTP and HTTPS or redirect HTTP to HTTPS or only HTTPS. So let's go ahead with HTTP and HTTP allowed HTTP method get and head. I want to just get the content restrict viewer access. No. And if you see your cache policy and origin request policy, if you go into the legacy cache settings, it will ask like uh, it will ask like what is the time you need to you want to cache or the need to define the TTL and max TTL. But here we are not going ahead with the now legacy cache settings. We are going ahead with the cache policy and cache optimal caching optimized. And if I click on view policy. If I click on view policy, it says default TTL seconds is 86400. Uh, that is one day. Maximum is TTL is 315360. That is nothing equal to one year. So in between, we need to configure how much time your content should be cached in the edge locations. So let's go ahead with the caching optimized and here is the web application firewall. I will talk about web application firewall and as of now, I do not want to enable any security protections. Next is the next is the price class. So it says use all edge locations for best performance or use only North America and Europe or use North America, Europe, Asia, Middle East and Africa So for best performance. Use all the edge locations. If you want, you can add a alternate domain name. If you add alternate domain name, you need a SSL certificate for this and standard logging uh, you want you get a logs in cloud uh, in the cloud watch. So this is how you create a 
cloud front distribution and here it asks default root object default root object is the index.html which resides inside my bucket cloud front origin s3 this is the default root object ipv6 off on if a you viewer with ipv6 trying to access content okay his request will be served likewise i can create a distribution now once i click on create the distribution it says policy needs to be updated let me try to copy the policy and let me paste it here and let me show you how what the policy says so if you say here this is the policy and what it says is effect is allowed okay effect is allowed what is the principle principle is cloud front and in the cloud front we created a distribution this is the account number and this is the distribution oar to hd let's uh, so we have the this is the distribution name which got created oar to hd and so resources s3 bucket this is the s3 bucket so the request will be allowed only from cloud front distribution where the resource is equal to this s3 bucket where the condition they have specified is only from this cloud front distribution and we are going to copy the policy go to the bucket policy and paste it and click on save the changes now if you uh, go to this policy and click on our is 2 hd distribution click on 2 hd okay if you see here it's in deploying state it will take time two to three minutes to deploy it but for this demo i have again created a, another cloud front distribution and once i click on this distribution if you copy this distribution name and try to search it you can see this is the content the same content resides in s3 bucket if you try to access your request will be served from the edge location so this is about the cloud front how we create a cloud front distribution so we let's say origin is s3 or elastic load balancer or your custom origin and in create distribution what we do is we full, uh, specify the protocol policy the path pattern the http methods the sign in your url cached it policy how much time we need to cache the content and optionally we associate the web application firewall now another another one is uh, here i want to talk about is the invalidation now let's say i have that index dot index dot html and in which i have made some changes and for this index dot html i have made some changes and let's say a new content resides i have added four lines again and i want to show it but well here is the end user here is the edge location and here is the origin let's say s3 here in the index dot html is the new version but the user is still able to see the old content in this case we invalidate the cache even if the uh, whatever the file we have mentioned let's say it is for 24 hours and only it's been three hours and i have changed the content i want to delete it in this case we use the invalidate cache whenever we invalidate the cache everything will be deleted from the edge location whatever now again the request will go to the first to the origin the new request the new content will be served and while the new content will be served it will be cached in the edge locations so that is the edge location we can have multiple origins as well and another one is the last is the web application firewall so web application firewall is um, uh, application layer, layer firewall which aws helps to protect attacks from the layer 7 layer 7 so in web application firewall we create rules in rules we have aws managed rules and we have customer managed rules so in aws managed rules let me show you that here web and shield protect against ddos attacks and malicious web traffic so in web application firewall so it protects your web application from common web exploits layer 7 attacks we create a web acls and here if we see the resource type is cloud front distribution 
let's say name is as a demo and we can add the resource and let's say we can add this resource click on next and here i was talking about the rules add managed rules that are the aws managed or you can add your own rules if you click on add managed rules rule groups so inside which we what rules resides is account creation fraud protection bot control account takeover protection and if you see the free rule groups admin protection amazon ip reputation list those ips which are malicious aws adds it on on this list and on one click we can create a we can add this rule to the web acl and we can create the web acl so these are the rules so we can create a custom rules as well in the custom rule we will define the ip sets what is mean by ip ip set is i want to allow traffic only from this cidr block i want to allow traffic from let's say only from this cidr block i can mention it in the ip set it is an allow or block and once we create this web acl it will contain all the rules whom to allow whom to block i can link this with the cloud front distribution so once i link this with cloud front distribution and let's say i have uh, selected the rule like the ip anonymous ip list and this ip list so whatever the malicious ips they will be restricted at the edge locations because we have linked this to cloud front distribution in the cloud uh, distribution we have selected all the edge locations this will uh, sync all the so all the edge locations will not all so these ips will not be allowed to enter the edge location will not be able to allow to access the content so that is the web acl so here we did not attach any uh, web acl to the cloud front but we can attach it once we have created a distribution as well in the security you can select security web application firewall you can click on edit you can enable the security you can use existing web application firewall so that was all about the cloud front and key features of cloud front ttl and invalidation we discussed geo restriction if you want to restrict traffic from specific countries let's say you do not want the traffic from europe or us or any other country you can restrict it with the help of geo restriction and we can also add alternate cname alternate cname to the cloud front distribution if i click on the cloud front distribution if i go here if i want to I'll change the door distribution domain name i can add a i can add an alternate cname and this is possible along with the ssl certificate which is we can create in the aws certificate manager and that was all about the cloud front abhishek over to you thank you pankaj for your invaluable insights on technology I'm sure it was certainly a very informative session for all of you. If you guys are interested in learning more about various AWS, do check out our super discounted batches of virtual instructor lead trainings on our website, springpeople.com. These VILT trainings are leveraged online from the comforts of your home and flexible as per your schedule and location. If you do not find any suitable batches, we would be happy to discuss and schedule private batches for you. If you don't have time to join live online, then do try out our affordable self-paced courses as well. For more information, do write to us at training at springpeople.com or call on our number displayed on the current slide. Now we will open the forum to answer questions that we have received during the session. So let's get our questions answered. Over to you, Mr. Pankaj. Okay, thank you, Abhishek. Let me take a few of the questions. Okay, so one of the question, one of the question is, I have a hosted zone in route, I have registered a domain in route 53 and can I create a hosted zone on GoDaddy? 
yeah that is also possible which i have explained you we call it as route 53 interoperability if you have a question or you have a domain register on godaddy and you have want to create a route 53 you want to create a hosted zone in route 53 that is also possible so only thing is when you create a hosted zone whatever the four name servers you need to go ahead and update it okay i hope that answers your question okay uh Abhishek, i'm done with the few of the questions that's it for mine dear participants if you have any other questions you can ask currently thank you everyone we appreciate you being here we shall be sending out the webinar recording to all of you participants soon i request you to kindly provide feedback before signing off which will help us improve the quality of our future events thanks again for joining us today signing off on behalf of team spring people hope to see you again for our next expert webinar thank you and goodbye